and welcome back to Cinders. We are in the bar with Peralt, and he is talking about how ashamed he is of what he has had to do recently. The killing may have been brutal, but at least it was honorable. Didn't you ever feel bad about taking their lives? I'm only the sword. The king is the one who wields it. The burden of guilt is on him. It's my good fortune that I served a wise king who didn't enjoy bloodshed. That's enough of such heavy subjects, though. I'd rather get to know you more, if you don't mind. Wawa, chicka, wawa! You look like a girl from the town, but I haven't seen you around. I don't live in the town, actually. I live in the house ruled by Lady Carmosa. Oh, forgive me. I didn't realize you were nobility. Your clothes give you the appearance of one of the town folk. I didn't know you were incognito. <laughs> it's not a disguise. This is what I wear every day. After my father passed away, Carmosa took over. She treats me as one of the servants, but without any pay. I don't even have any money to spend on clothing. I'm sorry to hear that. It's a shame your father chose Carmosa to take over the estate. He chose her? Isn't that what happened? Before he passed away, he should have left a will. The will would appoint the next head of the house. It's a shame he didn't choose you. I've never heard anything about his will. I don't think father would willingly put me in this situation. That doesn't sound right at all. If Lady Carmosa wasn't appointed, she's breaking the law. And I know about laws. I didn't realize that. Something about this situation seems suspicious. I hope you get it sorted out. I wish I could speak with you longer, but I must start my patrol. It was a pleasure talking with you. If you ever need anything, I'd be happy to help you. Lift your skirts, if you know what I mean. Thank you, I'll see you then. Take care of yourself. Peace out! This is the first time I've heard of Father's Will. I wonder why he never wrote one. He did, unless he did write one. In that case, what happened to it? Carmosa ate it. I'll have to investigate as soon as I get the chance. Well, there's no point in sitting here in the tavern alone. I don't want to attract the wrong company. The sun is already setting. I've spent the whole day in town, in the town, and what a day it was! I guess time flies when you're having interesting chats with people you normally have no chance to talk to. Oh, how I wish life was a fairy tale and I could do that every day. It is, Cinders, and yet life is what it is. And I have never been able to stay in town past sunset. When I was a child, I had to head back to the residence for safety. And then Carmosa entered the picture and took over. But even without her, I would have been a bit detached from the town's life. I might dress and work like every other girl here, but I still live in a mansion quite some distance from town. I have no real friends here except Tobias. I hear no news, no gossip. I really don't know what their life is about. Sure, my own life is safer and probably more luxurious, but I wonder what it would be like to live here. Be a normal town girl, wake up to the sounds of life and excitement on the street, get out of bed knowing a myriad of things await me when I walk out the door. That life, that life goes by fast, and an adventure might begin around each corner. Then again, if some town girl looked outside her window right now and saw me, what would she think? She'd think you're talking to yourself for like a full six minutes here. She would probably remember her own boring chores, the constant danger of hogwash flung from high windows to the street. She would envy me. I need to stop daydreaming. It's getting really late. My golden cage awaits, and the two sweet singing birds I share it with are going to screech their lungs out if I stay here any longer. And I wouldn't want to give them reason to worry, much less an excuse for picking on me. Back to the house, but I'm not gonna- Yeah, they're only giving me the option to go to the house because they know how I like to stray. I would have gone to the forest or the cemetery, had I been allowed to. Alas. ALAS! It's nighttime. Home sweet home. I used to love returning home when my father was alive. I missed sharing the events of the day with him. Just talk to yourself, you did that in town. Now it just seems like a grim prison, and my parole has just been revoked. Not to mention I'm probably up for a long talk with the jailer, seeing how late it is. You're back, safe and sound too, with no signs of having been attacked by robbers, wolves, or some such. Though I probably shouldn't be surprised that they didn't want you either. Sophia, charming as always. I kind of expected Gloria to be here and, tr to, and try to reprimand me. It doesn't seem like her to just let such a breach of rules slip without a word. It does seem strange, doesn't it? I'm as surprised as you are. 
I thought there was nothing as important for her as taking any chance she has to mimic Mom's contempt. Oh, I can imagine it already. If Mom was here, she'd tell you you should have a stick up your derriere like I do. You're awful, and more importantly, off the point. What happened with Gloria? I don't know. She didn't seem that angry. More like sad, really. Both mean that she's not well at all, so I'm content either way. Still, I wonder what could throw Gloria off her high horse, and out of that annoying Carmosa pose, for that matter. Did something happen in the house today? Well, dinner was burned a bit, so Gloria got her reason to shout at the servants some more. That hardly sounds like a reason to get depressed, does it? No, it does not. But apart from that, I couldn't tell you what the reason could be. But I don't think you need to worry about her. It'll just blow over and you'll be fine. Whatever it is that's eating Gloria. Thank you. So if you couldn't say what happened, does that mean you did get the chance to get out of the house? I didn't. Sunshine, birds, and bees, and friendly people that will stab you the moment you turn your back are not for me. But I took my time of freedom to stay in my room and rest from all this, so I saw little of Gloria today. You stayed in your own room the whole day? How come? Surely it will come as a surprise to you when I say I'm not a people person. I preferred to use this time for myself alone. May I ask what you did then? I used my peace and quiet to just sit and think things through, and finish a couple of things I had no chance to get around to with Carmosa on my back. Things like, you're pushing, Cinders, she's an introvert, leave her alone. Oh, that is nothing of importance. At least not in comparison to the ominous discovery Gloria made this morning. Did you know she has found a stain on a curtain in the hallway? That one. Oh no! Hard to believe, but it's true. Half of our morning and all of our dinner conversation was about that stain being a sign of something greater. Household and lifestyle deteriorating. Servants' morale and respect dropping. Kingdoms falling. Dark times approaching. And most of all, that stain is improper! Well, Gloria does take house duties very seriously, but you're avoiding questions about your day. Cinders, cinders, please. Maybe, but so are you. Surely after the whole day in the town, you have loads of stories to tell. It really was nice to get out without the feeling I need to return or else. Hurry, I mean, why am I reading things wrong? Whatever. And we usually have so little chance to speak to anyone outside of the house. And the town looks magical in the evening. It simply doesn't go to sleep. All the windows are lit, people walk to the streets, if only to stroll to the tavern. Have you ever been to the town past sunset? No, I haven't. Carmosa saw it neither appropriate nor useful for her daughter to go out in the evening. But you must be exhausted. Indeed I am. Even my small, rock-hard bed seems like a piece of heaven now. I won't stop you from reuniting with your bed of rocks, then. I prefer to be alone anyway. But do be careful. Those bed bugs can get really big and eat you alive if you let them. Everything is possible in the fairyland you seem to live in, princess. I wish you well too, Sophia. Good night. Peace out, ladies. Get out of my room! Cinders? Oh wait, I have to give her a much... Uh, there, her voice sounds just like Cinders' voice to me. Cinders, are you awake? I'm awake. I'll be right there. I'll get to work in a minute. No, it's not about that. I just need to talk to you. All right, Gloria, what is it? What's so important that you have to speak with me at this hour? At this hour? You mean noon? I wanted to speak with you about the way you've been behaving these past few days. Now there goes my nice morning. Or afternoon. Listen, I realize we were never really on the best of terms, but what has been going on recently is something new indeed. If you really think that I will turn a blind eye on all your childish, egotistic exploits, then you need to think again. What are you talking about, Gloria? I didn't do anything. Oh, you didn't do anything outright destructive. You are far too smart for that. But do you think I haven't noticed all the little jabs at me? You take every opportunity to undermine my efforts and make my life harder. Really, I don't know what's happening to you, Cinders. 
Do you think I'm stupid or that I don't have any feelings? I'm trying to understand you, really I am, but it seems like you're reveling in this chaos you're creating, as if you wanted things to fall apart. Despite the efforts of all those who want to keep things together. This is where we differ, Gloria. True, our relationship was never civil, but I think I'm beginning to understand why. We may be a family, but we are not alike. All I'm trying to do is survive in this madhouse as unscathed as possible. What seems like chaos to you is freedom for me. Besides, let's face it, Gloria. Things are already broken. Only Carmosa and you are still pretending that you can glue them back together like some ugly heir heirloom everybody hates. Heirloom? Typical answer of an angry child. Do you even realize that you have managed to describe the house, all of us, as if it was all about you? It is such a shame that Mother taught me so well about the importance of family. It must have made me naive. Because I still have hope that you will mature one day. Excuse me? Mature? Yes, become an adult. A person who is able to grasp a larger picture. Go beyond one's own interests. Also someone who can sacrifice personal happiness for the greater good of the house if it is necessary. I don't deny that it can be difficult at times, but we are not children anymore. We must realize how we all depend on Carmosa and support her in any way we can. I see. Well, it certainly doesn't play well with my idea of maturity. Especially the part about supporting Carmosa. <laughs> 